It's very difficult to sit there and listen to Mr. Schiff tell the tale that he just told. Let's remember how we all got here. They made false allegations about a telephone call. The President of the United States declassified that telephone call and released it to the public. How's that for transparency? When Mr. Schiff found out that there, were not, there was nothing to his allegations, he focused on the second telephone call. He made false, and his colleagues made false allegations about that second telephone call that occurred before the one he had demanded. So the President of the United States declassified and released that telephone call. Still nothing. Again, complete transparency in a way that, frankly, I'm unfamiliar with any precedent of any President of the United States releasing a classified telephone call with a foreign leader. When Mr. Schiff saw that his allegations were false, and he knew it anyway, what did he do? He went to the House, and he manufactured a fraudulent version of that call. He manufactured a false version of that call. He read it to the American people, and he didn't tell them it was a complete fake. Do you want to know about due process? I'll tell you about due process. Never before in the history of our country has a president been confronted with this kind of impeachment proceeding in the House. It wasn't conducted by the Judiciary Committee. Now, Mr. Nadler, when he applied for that job, told his colleagues when they took over the House that he was really good at impeachment. But what happened was the proceedings took place in a basement of the House of Representatives. The President was forbidden from attending. The President was not allowed to have a lawyer present. In every other impeachment proceeding, the President has been given a minimal, of, minimal due process. Nothing here. Not even Mr. Schiff's Republican colleagues were allowed into the skiff. Information was selectively leaked out. Witnesses were threatened. Good public servants were told that they would be held in contempt. They were told that they were obstructing. What does Mr. Schiff mean by obstructing? He means that unless you do exactly what he says, regardless of your constitutional rights, then you're obstructing. The President was not allowed to call witnesses. By the way, there's still evidence in the skiff that we haven't been allowed to see. I wonder why. No witnesses. Now, let, let's, let's think about something else for a second. Let's think about something else. They held these articles for 33 days. We hear all this talk about an overwhelming case, an overwhelming case that they're not even prepared today to stand up and make an opening argument about. That's because they have no case. Frankly, they have no charge. When you look at these articles of impeachment, they're not only ridiculous, they are dangerous to our republic. And why? First of all, the notion that invoking your constitutional rights to protect the executive branch that's been done by just about every president since George Washington, that that is obstruction. That is our patriotic duty, Mr. Schiff, particularly when confronted with a wholesale trampling of constitutional rights that I'm unfamiliar with in this country. Frankly, it's the kind of thing that our State Department would criticize if we see it in foreign countries. We've never seen anything like it. And Mr. Schiff said, have I got a deal for you? 
abandon all your constitutional rights, forget about your lawyers, and come in and do exactly what I say. No thank you. No thank you. And then he says he has the temerity to come into the Senate and say, we have no use for courts. It's outrageous. Now let me tell you another story. There's a man named Charlie Kupperman. He is the deputy national security advisor. He is the number two to John Bolton. Because you have to remember, Mr. Schiff wants you to forget, but you have to remember how we got here. They threatened him. They sent him a subpoena. Mr. Kupperman did what any American should be allowed to do, used to be allowed to do. He was forced to get a lawyer. He was forced to pay for that lawyer. And he went to court. Mr. Schiff doesn't like courts. He went to court. And he said, Judge, tell me what to do. I have obligations that frankly rise to the, what the Supreme Court has called the apex of executive privilege in the area of national security. And then I have a subpoena from Mr. Schiff. What do I do? You know what Mr. Schiff did? did? Mr. Kupperman went to the judge and the House said, never mind. We withdraw the subpoena. We promise not to issue it again. And then they come here and they ask you to do the work that they refuse to do for themselves. They ask you to trample on executive privilege. Now, would they ever suggest that the executive could determine on its own what the speech or debate clause means? Of course not. Would they ever suggest that the House could invade the discussions that the Supreme Court has behind closed doors? I hope not. But they come here and they ask you to do what they refuse to do for themselves. They had a court date. And they withdrew the subpoena, they evaded a decision, and they're asking you to become complicit in that evasion of the courts. It's ridiculous. And we should call it out for what it is. Obstruction for going to court? It's an act of patriotism to defend the constitutional rights of the president. Because if they can do it to the president, they could do it to any of you, and they could do it to the, any American citizen. And that's wrong. And Lawrence Tribe, who's been advising them, I guess he didn't tell you that in the Clinton impeachment he said, it's dangerous to suggest that invoking constitutional rights is impeachable. It's dangerous. And you know what? It is dangerous, Mr. Schiff. So what are we doing here? We have the House that completely concocted a process that we've never seen before. They locked the president out. Oh, and by the way, will Mr. Schiff give documents? We asked him for documents. We asked him for documents when, contrary to his prior statements, it turned out that his staff was working with the whistleblower. We said, let us see the documents, release them to the public. We're still waiting. So the idea that they would come here and lecture the Senate. By the way, I was surprised to hear that, did you realize you're on trial? Mr. Nadler's putting you on trial. Everybody's on trial except for them. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. They said in their brief, we have overwhelming evidence, and they're afraid to make their case. Think about it. Think about it. It's common sense. Overwhelming evidence to impeach the President of the United States, and then they come here on the first day, and they say, you know what? We need some more evidence. 
Now let me tell you something. If I showed up in any court in this country and I said, judge, my case is overwhelming, but I'm not ready to go yet. I need more evidence before I can make my case. I would get thrown out in two seconds. And that's exactly what should happen here. That's exactly what should happen here. It's too much to listen to, almost. The hypocrisy of the whole thing. And what are the stakes? What are the stakes? There's an election in almost nine months. Months from now, there's going to be an election. Senators in this body the last time had very wise words. They echoed the words of our founders. A partisan impeachment is like stealing an election. And that's exactly what we have. We have, talk about the framers' worst nightmare. It's a partisan impeachment that they've delivered to your doorstep in an election year. Some of you are upset because you should be in Iowa right now. But instead, we're here. And they're not ready to go. And it's outrageous. It's outrageous. And the American people won't stand for it. I'll tell you that right now. They're not here to steal one election. They're here to steal two elections. It's buried in the small print of their ridiculous articles of impeachment. They want to remove the President Trump from the ballot. They won't tell you that. They don't have the guts to say it directly. But that's exactly what they're here to do. They're asking the Senate to attack one of the most sacred rights we have as American, Americans, the right to choose our president in an election year. It's never been done before. It shouldn't be done before. Now, the reason it's never been done is because no one ever thought that it would be a good idea for our country, for our children, for our grandchildren, to try to remove a president from a ballot, to deny the American people the right to vote based on a fraudulent investigation conducted in secret with no rights. Well, I could go on and on, but my point is very simple. It's long past time that we start this so we can end this ridiculous charade and go have an election. Thank you very much, Mr. Chief Justice.